Like many of you out there, as Christmas approaches, part of what I need to accomplish here in the blacksmith shop is making Christmas presents. Welcome back to Black Bear Forge. And today what I have to do doesn't involve a whole lot of actual blacksmithing, but one of the people on my Christmas list is getting into metal detecting and needs a special kind of a little shovel scoop sort of a thing that seem to be very specific towards metal detecting, and I'm not real sure why, I'm not sure exactly how they're used, but I've looked at enough images online that I think I can make one, but it's gonna be mostly sheet metal work. And I think I'm gonna start with this hunk of old bandsaw blade. This was bandsaw blade from a big sawmill in the Pacific Northwest, and I think it will be just fine for making this little scoop out of. And these little scoops all seem to have some specific features. For one thing, they all have a kind of a V-bend in the middle of them, kind of like the keel of a boat. And as long as we're using the boat analogy, they have a flat back on them where the handle goes, kind of like the transom on a boat. And I assume that serves partly as a hand guard, so when you're digging, you can't run your hand down across the blade of the little scoop. But I also wonder if it serves some other purpose, and I'm not real sure how they're used, so I'm going to make sure I put that in. The third thing is some serrations along the edges because I assume these are meant to cut through sod so you can cut out a layer of sod, dig out whatever it is you found with your metal detector, put the sod back in there without disturbing the ground too much and things look good and people don't hate you for digging up the park. I suspect these serrations in this blade are probably a little too big though, so that's something I will do after I get this cut out and before I bend it. Most of this is going to be done with a little angle grinder, or maybe I'll heat this up and anneal it so I can use hacksaws, files, bandsaws, whatever I want. But right now this is hard steel. It's not something I want to cut with a hacksaw, a bandsaw, or a shear. So we're going to use the angle grinder with an abrasive blade. And I'm just going to roughly lay this out. These things all seem to be about seven or eight inches long. Probably about three inches wide up here at the top. So I'm going to just mark that. And while this edge isn't perfectly square, if I use a square off of that edge, my line will be. And this will be a center line. I'm kind of making this up as I go, so don't, uh, don't take this as the only and best way to make one of these. Or maybe this isn't a way to make one at all. There's always a chance that I'm going to end up trying to find a store in Colorado Springs next week to go buy one of these things because I didn't know what I was doing. And some of this I will adjust with a grinder as I look at it. But that's basically all the shovel blade's going to be, and then I'll lay out the teeth after I get this cut. Like I say, once it's cut, I think I'll go ahead and anneal it so we can work with files and things like that. So I brought this up to a nice red heat and let it cool down with the forge. Not a true annealing cycle, but a little bit softer than just normalizing it would result in. So the next thing we need to do is cut our saw teeth or serrations in this. And some of the ones you see online have a series up one side and then a shorter series down here. Some are up both sides here. Some of them are triangular, some of them are a little bit more sawtooth looking, but none of them look particularly sharp. This isn't going to be cutting wood, sawing through roots, anything like that. I think it's just for ripping through sod. So I think what I will probably do is go with a single side here and maybe down here just because it seems like it might be a little bit more versatile, kind of hard to say since I've never used one of these. I'll probably start it down here at about an inch. I think I'm going to go every half inch. These will be pretty big. And then I'm going to take my little gauge here. It's set at a quarter inch, and I think I'll just leave it there. I'm going to drill a hole at each one of these points. Which I think I'll probably drill a 3 16 hole. And that'll be at each place my gauge line intersects this line. 
and then I'll cut into those and that will form our teeth. Well, even after cooling it in the forge like that, this stuff is still relatively hard. I could tell I was wearing out a drill bit doing that. A little oil would have been nice, but it's cold in the shop and my oil is not flowing very well, so it's not an option right now. I'm just going to use this little guide I've got here to mark some lines to cut. And the teeth on all these things look like they angle up. So that's the way I'm going to do this. I just want to clean these up a little bit. I think that's good for the teeth. I want to mark center of this end here so that I can find it again. I think we're going to get this hot and put it in the vise and then put that bend in there in the vise. So I need to put something on here that I can find again when it's hot. And I think just a little V-notch will work. I'm just going to line my notch up. This is longer than my vise, so I'm just going to try to aim for the far side there. And this may take a couple of heats to get it done all the way across. This time I'll go to the point and try and line that up with my previous bend. Cools off quick while you're fiddling with it trying to get it lined up. I think once we're close, it'll be a lot easier to do the next time. So we're definitely getting there. I'll kind of clean up the flats at the anvil here. I'm not sure what this angle needs to be, but I think we'll just assume that's pretty close. I think that's the general idea. I've got this piece for my back and it's cut too big at the moment so I can easily work with it. I'll trim it there. I'm going to want to put a hole in the center right there. And I'll explain that hole in just a bit. See if I can get all this lined up over that bolster. I'm putting a square hole in this. Can't go through yet. Not quite. Just 
just about through. Turn the bolster around so it can shear through with a little bit different edge here, maybe. We just have to break that off. And the reason for that square hole is because I'm going to use a long carriage bolt as my uh, handle attachment. And now that will shoulder up very nicely in there. And then I can glue that onto a handle or I can use a threaded connection or whatever I want to do at this point. I've ground a bevel in both pieces and I'm just going to use the oxyacetylene torch to get this all to go together the way I want it to. So that could go down just a hair further. Just getting it in the vise so I can just reference this off the vise and I don't have to worry about hovering in midair while I get my initial welds in here. That looks like a full penetration weld. I can see a little bit of the weld coming through on the inside. So I'm pretty happy with that. And I'm just going to tack weld my bolt in there so it doesn't move. Next thing I want to do with this is grind this to the shape I want. That was just rough cut because I knew I'd want to come back and fine tune it when I was all done. I'm going to put my touch mark in here. And then a quick wire brushing. Well, that's all the forging steps. Or maybe I should say it's all the metalworking steps because there was hardly any forging in this. And I apologize for that if you were looking for a highly involved forging video. But sometimes just having the ability to work metal is all you need and you don't have to do a lot of forging. And this just happens to be one of those times. The next thing is to put a handle on it, and for that I'm going to take it into the basement wood shop and turn a handle on the lathe. I think it'll look really cool on this. By the way, I didn't do any hardening and tempering. This was hard enough to drill and hard enough to file after cooling with the forge earlier that I just went ahead and let it air cool. So it'll be hard enough for what it needs to do, and I would rather have a tool that bends than a tool that breaks. So I don't want it to be brittle and easily broken. It's a trowel, so it doesn't need to be sharp like a knife. So let's head into the wood shop and let's see if we can put a handle on this. I'm here in the wood shop in the basement of the house and it is time to make a handle for our little prospector's trowel. And I'm going to use a piece of apple. I found this, it's a little bit scroungy piece of apple and it's about an inch and a quarter square. And for my taste that might be a little small in a handle, 
but I have to remember that this is going to somebody that has much smaller hands than I do, so I think it's going to work out. And I think the little part here that's got some checks and some bad grain in it will all be scrapped by the time I'm done turning the handle. So I'm going to go ahead and get started turning this. I'm probably not going to narrate it too much. I'm certainly not qualified to teach wood turning. So I'm just showing you what I'm up to. Those of you who know more about wood turning probably have better ways to do a lot of this stuff. So let's head over to the lathe. Let's get started. ferrule that I'm going to use on the end of this is a piece of black pipe. I made this ages ago. I make them in little batches every now and then.
the next thing is going to be some epoxy in there. And I want to make sure that I don't get epoxy all over the handle. So I'm going to start with a little bit of masking tape right there and some shrink wrap really helps guarantee the handle stays clean. Good new thing about this epoxy is it's got a 25 minute working time so you don't have to be in any great big hurry to get it on there. I'm going to go ahead and put some shrink wrap on the shovel as well just to keep it a little clean. Now I'll frequently epoxy the ferrules on as well but because this one fits so tight and because it's got a little gap at the end that's going to fill up with epoxy and because it will be pinned right up against here I decided it wasn't that big a deal. A lot of it will probably squeeze out but I'd rather have it squeeze out and be sure that I've got it full than to just have a little bit at the end and have some problems. I'm going to put a clamp on there to hold that. Well, if this is going to take 24 hours to fully cure, and I probably shouldn't take the clamp off for at least 12 hours, I don't think I'm going to make you sit here and watch all that. I think we'll call it good for the video right here. I hope you enjoyed the video, and I hope my grandson enjoys his Christmas gift. I also hope he's not watching the video before Christmas, but I'll let him know that there's a video of it after Christmas. Anyways, I do hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. If you haven't done so already, I would love it if you hit that subscribe button down there. Feel free to stick around, watch a few of the other videos, share the videos with your friends. But then by all means, make time in your day to get out to your shop, make something, but stay safe, wear your safety glasses, and have a joyous holiday.